Men make up roughly half the proportion of people on the planet, but when it comes to mental health and physical health and problems in people's lives, there's this tendency globally to, to uh, ignore men's vulnerability. Our research shows you know, very clearly that men in general are more reluctant to seek help because asking for help for things like depression or prostate cancer, right, or physical pains has been feminized culturally. And so anything that's been feminized, men are going to be on average more anxious about engaging in those activities and seeking help falls under that, certainly. For men of color, there's the addition of being in a marginalized or even oppressed social identity. So, for example, many of the men of color that we've spoken to in our research identify the lack of therapists of color as a major obstacle to getting mental health care. When I think about sort of big picture where we're, where we're at culturally right now with regard to men and masculinity, I mean, clearly there's a, there's a, a huge uh, debate and a political divide around the question of whether masculinity is, is healthy and should be celebrated or whether it's so-called toxic. And in fact, toxic masculinity is not a term that shows up anywhere in psychological research on men and masculinity. It's more of a pop culture term. But I think it's there for a reason, and I, I think a big part of it is that, that people tend to confuse men and masculinity. So that if we hear of, for example, our own research um, identifies several problems associated with traditional forms of masculinity. I mean, they place men at risk for depression and marital problems and so on. When we try to, to, to point out the problems with that, it can often be heard as a critique of men or a, a um, uh, the desire to feminize men in some way. So it's as if masculinity and men are synonymous. But the, the truth is we know that men, you know, what does it mean to be male? I mean, it means to be biologically identified as a male body. Masculinity is this historically changing, moving target of what we're supposed to think, act, and feel as men. So when we take on a sort of critical stance towards masculinity, what we're doing is asking, are these ideas about who men should be helpful to people? When you see um, men in society who have a tremendous amount of what I'd call masculinity in the bank, right? So you think about professional athletes, right? Like they're probably the last individuals who are gonna have their man card called out. So in a sense, even though it may be damaging to their career, psychologically speaking, they're in some ways best prepared to take that risk by saying, yeah, I struggle with this. You know, I have anxiety, I have depression, it does affect me, I don't always feel confident and strong. And when they do that, this creates a, a spread of opportunity for all kinds of men of different backgrounds to say, hey, you know, if he can talk about that, maybe I can too.